Hello, sir. I'm looking for my friend Loxton, and was wondering if you'd seen- ah! Loxton! It's you! I finally found you! Oh, hey, Arlon. What's up? Dude! I thought you were dead! I went to your place to raid your fridge. I mean, not raid your fridge. And... And... Hello? Anybody home? Hello? Hello? Buddy? Loxton, are you here, buddy? Uh, I think someone stole your stuff. Like, like someone stole literally every single individual object that you own. Even the dirt on the floor. Oh, someone scrubbed it clean. Where are you, man? Are you in here? They stole the TV. And the couch. And the other couch. And the internet. And all your food that I was gonna eat and maybe pay you back for, probably. And the toilet! Oh, no wait, that, that's still there. But... What if it wasn't all stolen? What if it's just... Gone? What if Loxton just left? Is this it? Are we... finished? Uh, this is that one wall that was in that one shot of that one video, I think. Uh, they all kind of look the same. That's the spot where I spilled my drink. And that's the spot where I spilled my other drink. And over there is where I dropped my entire taco salad. It would take a million taco salads to fill this hole in my heart. <laughs> uh, Lux didn't come back. Uh, uh, uh. And that's where I dropped an entire lasagna. I've been looking for you for months, just going door to door and asking everyone I can find. By the way, the people at Jack in the Box are less than helpful. Arlo, we tweeted each other last week. And we've commented on each other's videos. You have my number. You could have just asked me where I moved. I did not think this through. Not at all. So can I raid your fridge? That was literally the biggest sandwich I've eaten this week. That was bigger than my head. Uh, so what's new with you, Arlo? Well, my channel's doing pretty good. I've got some stuff planned for... <laughs> uh, what's wrong? <laughs> All this, thinking you were gone forever, wandering around town, you being out of that fancy deli mustard, it's reminding me of the single saddest and most beautiful piece of drama that Nintendo has ever created, where one man has to endure the most terrifying tasks in order to save his one and only brother. Luigi's Mansion? No, I'm talking about something much sadder. The year is 1993. Mario and Luigi are fresh off a string of grand adventures, living the good life when the unthinkable happens. Mario is stolen away, dropped into a hole like an old sock casually tossed into a garbage can. Fortunately, we soon learn that he's fine. But then he's stolen away again, plummeting into a hole like an ant-covered donut furiously chucked into a garbage can. Luigi watches helplessly, perhaps waiting for Mario to drop into a third scene, maybe with its own hole but that never comes. Little does Luigi know that the terror, the pain he will endure, has only begun. Putting on his strongest face in such terrible circumstances, he pledges to search the castle for his brother. And at first all seems normal until Luigi enters an inconspicuous door and is subjected to the most cruel story twist to claim developer the software Toolworks, AKA Mindscape Interactive, has ever inflicted upon a character. He finds himself not in another room or in some other place in the marvelous and colorful world of the Mushroom Kingdom, but in the dreary, crime-ridden streets of our own Earth. Even worse, Luigi soon finds that he has stepped into more than just a world which has no place for him. He has stepped into a waking nightmare. 
He finds other humans, asks them for help, but they speak to him in riddles. He walks these unfamiliar streets, yet bafflingly still finds Koopas to stomp, and the juxtaposition only reminds him of the life he left behind. But oh, what's this? A familiar face? Surely Daisy will tell him what's going on and how to escape? But no. Despite his pleas, his lifelong friend only stares at him blankly, her mouth slack and her eyes as empty and lifeless as cold ashes. And she does the most brutal, inhuman thing of all. Asks him trivia questions. Luigi retreats, but finds this same ghostly figure wherever he goes. None offer help. None give him comfort. They only ask their endless questions. This is when the gravity of the situation truly sets in, and the dread is visible on Luigi's face. Thanks to the masterful work of game artist Wes Jenkins, that face conveys more than any amount of dialogue or narration ever could. The crippling sadness, the longing, the confusion, and the loneliness and the fear that he will never find his brother in this world of horrors. It's all there. So Luigi continues to search. After a time, Yoshi comes to join him, but this sweet reunion rapidly crumbles under the fact that now they're both trapped in this nightmare. More masterful animation at work. Luigi and Yoshi trudge on, failing to correctly answer trivia questions, running aimlessly around the sprawling world map. And they weep together. They hold each other as they weep for their friend, mutually yet wordlessly trying to fight back and ignore the dawning comprehension that they will never find him. And the player weeps as well, for there is a genius storytelling device at work here that has since gone unparalleled not only in the gaming industry, but in the very art of dramatic fiction. A metafictional marriage of player and character that modern developers can only dream of, but never hope to achieve. Luigi's own confusion and frustration is reflected in the player, who has just been the subject of the biggest dramatic twist of all. They purchased a Mario game, and they got this. They truly feel what Luigi feels, and they wander forever, without any hope of figuring out what to do or how to find Mario, trying so very hard not to learn anything. And of course, this genius device was taken to the extreme, for still to this day, no one has ever beaten Mario is Missing. Absolutely no one, not one single person on this entire planet has actually found Mario, for no one could possibly know that much about ancient art. Fortunately, data miners have been able to crack the code and reveal the ending, but as we should have expected, it only brings more heartache. Luigi, finally finding his way through the castle by means no human could hope to understand, pulls a lever and frees Mario. But this reunion is also bittersweet. Luigi's Groundhog Day-esque search, which for all we know took thousands of years. The assumed torture that Mario had to endure at the hands of Bowser. The happy, carefree life that they will never truly win back. This is all wordlessly shared in nothing more than a look. Two brothers, each noticing that the other's eyes are a little dimmer, like the shrinking flame on a candle that has burned itself too low. They are happy to be together again, yet they have aged, and they know that nothing going forward will ever be the same again. At the very end, it's time to deal with Bowser at last, but even this satisfaction is made bitter in our mouths, for we are reminded that despite our primal desires for revenge, physical violence is never the answer. Bowser is shot into the sky to land in the Arctic snow where he quickly freezes and, if you are faint of heart, look away now, dear viewers. We can only assume that Mario is Missing takes place at the end of the Mario timeline, for here Bowser meets what is clearly his gruesome demise. The adventure is over, but to this day the story lives on as a tragic and poignant chapter in the book of Nintendo. It's a tale that touches the soul and stays with us for as long as we have hearts with which to feel. One that would remain unchallenged in terms of dramatic impact until three years later with the release of Mario Teaches Typing 2.